Hey there, it's Soraya, and I've been meaning to do one of these videos for a while. Um, just to kind of update people, and I generally do one around my birthday, and I, I miss that too, because I have been very stressed and overwhelmed, and I'm suspecting one of the medications I'm on is also causing me to be very fatigued. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk about a few things. As, as I said, I did just have a birthday, and unlike a lot of people, I don't... I don't kind of shun my birthday. I'm not like, oh, no, not another birthday. I always look at it as, heh, I'm still here. Somehow I managed to survive another year. Um, I had a tooth almost kill me. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do a video following up is I had gotten put on Ozempic, or Ozemic, whatever it is, um, for blood sugar control. One of the side effects is weight loss. Uh, so a lot of people get on it for weight loss. But what it really does is just slows down your digestion. This is bad if you're diabetic and your body stops digesting, which is what mine did. Uh, so I had a two days in a row where my blood sugar kept dropping. I had been on the Ozempic for two weeks and had no side effects, nothing bad in any way. And uh, really wasn't thinking too much about it. And we had had a band play. I don't remember which band now. Uh, yep. Completely blanking on the band, but they were good. I remember they were really good, and I enjoyed the show and did the interview afterwards. Uh, they played our studio for Last Exit. Afterwards, my sound guy, Nathan, helped me wire the um, the dash cam that one of my kind listeners had bought me at some point. It had a rear dash cam on it, which is really cool, and I used it for one of the um, Wandering the Road shows. It's the one that's going backwards. Because it's just a neat view, but it's also helpful if anyone ever hits me from behind or whatever. I can I have that view. But I had it hanging in the back window. He helped me kind of wire it in to the back uh, by the license plate. And uh, then suddenly I got very sick. And this had happened uh, earlier in the week. And I was interviewing Martin Popoff. And I got done with the interview and I stood up and suddenly was really sick and had to lay down for a couple hours. And then, then I was fine. I don't know what it was. I don't know what caused it. But I wasn't on the Ozempic at the time. So a few days later, I started the Ozempic. was fine for two weeks. And then this happened, and I felt awful and laid down until my blood sugar woke me up because it was low. And I was like, okay, well, I'll go get something to eat. And as soon as I ate, I threw it up. So if your blood sugar is dropping and... You keep throwing up everything you eat. That's really bad. And uh, I went through the entire night struggling to keep anything down. And because I, I'm, I'm not prone to vomiting, I'm not prone to getting very sick. I get burned out. I get stressed out. I get um, overwhelmed. But I don't actually come down with a lot of uh, illnesses, with the exception, apparently, of COVID, which I've had at least five times now. But... Um, yeah, the throwing up was kind of a surprise. It came out of nowhere, and uh, I just assumed it was a stomach bug. I wasn't blaming the Ozempic at the time. So that entire Saturday night into Sunday morning, I just kept trying to eat, trying to eat little bits, trying to keep my blood sugar up above a certain point. Uh, because had I gone to sleep, it may have killed me, because my blood sugar would drop, and that's that. So I, I did manage to finally get it up to a manageable level and finally be able to get some sleep and uh the next day sunday i got up and i felt fine so i was like okay so i ate felt fine so i said okay so it's probably just a stomach bug or i ate something that upset my stomach which is weird but it could have happened uh yeah so uh that night everything i ate didn't digest blood sugar started dropping again precipitously and uh, the stuff was just sitting in my stomach, not digesting. It was just sloshing around. And I think it was like 7 a.m. before I was finally like, okay, that's it. I'm done. I can't eat anything else. I feel horrible because I have all this food in me and it's not digesting. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and then finally my blood sugar started to come up and I could get some sleep. Uh, again, not really thinking about it being the Ozempic. And I took the next Ozempic dose. And then Tuesday, that was Monday, I took the next dose, and because I felt fine, Tuesday, I started throwing up again. Uh, 
And for the following week after that, I was unable to eat really anything. Anything I tried to eat, it uh, it just didn't digest. Uh, I wasn't throwing up, luckily, after that incident on Tuesday, but uh, I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep because my stomach would just gurgle. So I went to sleep, uh, I laid down, and after about an hour, I'd feel nauseous, sit up, burp, and be fine. But it meant then I had to go try to get back to sleep, and that's not something I do very easily. So this just kept repeating over and over for almost a week. And uh, that Friday, uh, they had given me a antibiotic that had the side effect of speeding up your digestion. And when it was initially prescribed, I didn't have my regular doctor because she was on vacation. The guy I was dealing with was not listening to what I was talking about. He was, he was like looking at my diabetes and I'm going, this is not the issue. I just need something so I can digest food. Uh, finally, he prescribes this antibiotic. I call the pharmacy. I say, you know, I know you're closing in like an hour. It takes me half an hour to get there. Do you have this in stock? Can I get it tonight? And they said, yeah, almost certainly. So I, uh, I drive down there, only to find out they had the wrong version in stock. Luckily, the next day they got the right one. We were recording Last Exit that night. I took it and uh, did nothing. Did absolutely nothing. It took me four and a half hours to eat a power bar. I was told by both the doctor and the pharmacist, once I took this, you know, a few minutes, you know, 20 minutes later, I would feel my stomach just kind of drain. Never got that. Um, took a second dose, and then I was able to eat a little bit, and it got better from there. Uh, but that was the, uh, at some point I posted, I'm really sick. I can't do re do much of anything. I was still trying to keep up with the shows. Uh, a lot of patrons have told me, it's okay if I take a week off from where the road go and just run a, an old show, but I don't ever want to do that. I've been doing this since the beginning of 2013. I have never missed a week. I do like being a few weeks ahead. That doesn't always happen. It is happening now. And I'll tell you some of the guests we have coming up since they're already recorded. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't like missing a week. I've missed in, in 30 years of doing the last exit for the lost. I think there's only been three shows, three weeks that a show didn't air. Wish I had them all. Um, but once was a snowstorm that nobody could get there. Uh, once, Man, I don't even remember now. Oh, once was when the building got condemned. Um, and we were going to do it live from the transmission shack until we actually saw the shack. And we said, you know what? Let's run last week's again. Because we had a pre-record up until that point. And we said, no, we want to do it live. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't going to happen. That was, that was nightmare fuel. Um, yeah, so I don't really have time to take time off. I don't do vacations. I mean, to me, vacations are going to a concert or like some of the stuff we got coming up. I'm going to talk about uh, Albatwitch. That's a vacation to me, but I'm also still doing stuff at those things. I'd rarely go to a concert where I'm not interviewing or uh, doing photography for someone or video, t you know, taping the concert, video taping, recording the concert. Uh, <laughs> I guess it really wasn't that long ago that video tape was still a thing. I have tons of digital uh, videotapes. But anyway, that was that. Was that and uh, so that, that almost killed me. Uh, but only because if I had gone to sleep, which I really wanted to go to sleep, uh, I may not have woken up again. But I'm still here, as I said, so all things good. And uh, I say this every year, and it's still true. There's nothing I could do at 25 or 30 that I can't do now, but there's a lot of stuff I can do now I couldn't do at 25 or 30, so I'm all for that. Uh, I think people focus too much on age, and obviously everyone ages differently. You know, there's a lot to do with genetics, there's a lot to do with whether or not you're, say, a smoker, heavy drinker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's that's obviously a factor. And I don't smoke. I don't drink. I am physically active, and uh, that also helps. I have uh, a 92-year-old computer customer who uh, I think is awesome. She's She has a great sense of humor. She is sharp as a knife mentally, 
and she bolts around. And the first time I met her, she said to me, uh, excuse me if I'm a little slow. I, I broke my back lifting weights. Yeah, not because she didn't have the muscle structure, but her bones literally couldn't take the weight she was lifting. Uh, that's how I want to be. That's not with a broken back, per se. But that's, you know, I don't intend on stopping. I don't intend on saying, oh, I'm too old to do things. I'm just going to keep going until my body decides I'm not going anymore. Um, yeah, so that's it. If you want to, if you want to send me something for my birthday, I'll attach the Amazon wish list below. Honestly, uh, a donation is much more appreciated than anything else right now because I'm behind on some kind of important things like property taxes. And, uh, I could definitely use a little extra cash flow to pay for some, uh, pay some stuff off. So uh, that stuff is all at wheretheroadgo.com. If you just want to go to, the, there's a Cash App, Venmo, all that stuff. Um, I'll put it below as well if you want to donate. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, people ask me if I had a good birthday. Again, I don't really celebrate my birthday so much. Um, I fell across, the, it was on a Saturday. Uh, the, yeah, I mean, I got to see a few people I don't get to see very often. Uh, so that was, that's a big deal to me. Um, we recorded a great last exit. I did a great episode of Where Did the Road Go? Um, so yeah, it was a good birthday. It wasn't anything, you know, there was no, nothing super special about it, but it was, uh, it was good. I enjoyed the time. So, uh, things coming up. Oh, the other thing I have to thank everyone for, uh, over the course of the summer, my car, my Impala that has survived the flood of 2018 and everything else. This thing is well over 300,000 miles on it. It did have a bad radiator, and I was I went to go to Ithaca one day, and I start driving down the road, and it immediately overheats. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm only two blocks away, luckily. I always carry uh, transmission uh, uh, coolant with me. Because you should always carry and cool it with you. It's one of the things you may end up needing in an emergency. Um, especially if you're in a cold area. I mean, you can take water with you in a, if you're somewhere that's always warm. Um, but obviously here is not always warm uh, in upstate New York. Uh, so I pulled over, popped the hood, didn't see anything obvious, poured cool into the radiator, turned around, got it home just as it started to overheat again. And I thought to myself, man, I hope it's not the radiator. Radiator is going to be over $500, and I don't really have it. I said, maybe it's a hose. Could be a hose. Totally could be a hose. Um, took a couple of days for my mechanic to look at it. Uh, he calls me up, and he says, hey, how are things going? I'm like, or how, how are you doing? And I said, I'm all right. Why? And he's like, oh, because you're not going to be. And uh, he then proceeded to tell me that the engine block blew a huge hole in it. Um, size of like a golf ball. Uh, I think that's what he said. Anyway, it was, you turn it on, it just shot antifreeze out of the engine. So it was either a new engine on a 2002 Impala or a new car. Uh, I do have a second car, but unfortunately that car has a bad engine. So I can't rely on it. I can't drive anywhere there are big hills like Ithaca because it will, um, well, we don't actually know what it'll do. It, uh, starts blowing white smoke and stops running. This sounds like a blown head. It could be a cracked head, but under normal pressure, it's fine. So I can drive it to Rochester because from here to Rochester is fairly flat, but I can't drive it up the hill out of Ithaca without causing problems. Uh, so that's, that's not a reliable solution. And where I am, you need a car. So I, I did a GoFundMe and uh, a bunch of you helped out. And some of you really helped out, and you know who you are, and I've thanked you already for that. And I was able to get a, uh, oh, what is it? I don't even remember what it is. 2008 Hyundai, I think it is. And uh, so far, that's that's been good. Uh, my mechanic happened to have that, and it needed a few things fixed on it. And he fixed it up and sold it to me cheap. So, uh, yes, thank you for everyone who helped me out with that. It was very much appreciated, and it, it really kind of saved me. Um, it's also been a little over a year since my brother died, which which seems very strange. Um, 
And once in a while I see something and think, oh, I should tell them about, yeah. I think a lot of people probably know what that's like. Even though I wasn't that close with him, it's still like, oh, he would be interested in, uh, all right. Um, stuff coming up. Um, Alpatwitch, October 5th, Columbia, Pennsylvania. Alpatwitchday.com. It's free. Timothy Renner will be there. Um, as far as I know, Octavian will be there. Uh, Chris Ernst is coming out. Uh, I don't know who else, but they'll, it's always an interesting time there. So come out. I am going to have DVDs of the DVDs and Blu-rays of the movie Chris made, the documentary Chris made on Where the Road Go. I brought them last year, but last year I got there at the very end of it and it was pouring rain and it sucked. Um, but this year I'm going to get there earlier. I've already figured this all out. And I'm going to bring a stack of DVDs and Blu-rays, and you can just have them. Uh, what I may bring and sell copies of is the artwork for the autobiography that's coming up. Well, part one of the autobiography that's coming up. Uh, Matt Fest has had the artwork done for a while. It's absolutely stunning. I want to show it to everyone, but I want to wait till the book's closer to done. I am... I went through the task of sorting and reading through all the old letters and correspondences I had with tape traders and friends and everything uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s, pre-internet, and it actually did uh, add a lot to the book. I wasn't sure if it was going to matter. It mattered a lot. There's some really awesome stuff in there, some tra mildly traumatic stuff in there, because uh, some of it was ex-girlfriends and stuff, but... Uh, yeah, it was it was a worthwhile thing to do, and I'm not 100% done, but I think I'm down to four piles. I think four piles left, four people left, uh, that I need to read through all their letters. And uh, then I'm going to put the rest of the book together. I will have everything I need. I also found a lot of old pictures and stuff that my mom kept that also helped me fill in gaps. Uh, one of the things I've talked about on the show is... Although I remembered playing trombone in, like, fifth grade, I don't ever remember doing much with it. And, uh, apparently, I played in concerts. I have no memory of this. There's pictures, there's programs, there's there's all this stuff. I don't remember a single stitch of that. So, uh, yeah, it was things like that that uh, changed the book a little bit. Changed some of the stuff was in the book, because then we could make it more accurate. Because uh, I think what I wrote in the book is I didn't really care about playing trombone, but apparently I did for two years. And uh, there's pictures to prove it. Yeah. It's weird. when Because even seeing them, there's nothing coming back at all. So, uh, yeah, there's that. There's Alba Twitch. So come out to Alba Twitch. I'm going to try and make some kind of prints of those covers. Um, and the book will be from, like, my entire early life up to about 1996 which is far more than it sounds like uh, because there's a lot of weird stuff. A lot of the weirdest stuff happened, I think, in that time period. Um, there was probably a lot of stuff that happened between 97 and like 2001 when I wasn't taking as many notes, and that's very frustrating to me now. But um, I remember some of it, and some of it I, I did take notes. But the, the shaking tree stuff... Uh, that was in there, the, the moon sh vibrating, all that stuff. Uh, weird orbs, weird lights, all that stuff. That's all in that early portion there. So later it turns more towards uh, less high strangeness, more like synchronistic stuff. Um, you know, late, at this point in my life, like poltergeist activity is common and it pretty much ignored. It's like, what was that noise? Okay, well, whatever. Um, just as long as it doesn't break anything. Um, sleep paralysis, weird dreams, these things are a part of my life. Uh, Kundalini experiences, things like that, so I'm rarely surprised by things. And I think because of that, sometimes I just don't even realize how much weird stuff is around me until somebody's around me who's not used to it, and then they're going, what was that? It's like, oh, I, I don't know. Because in the end, I, I really don't know. Um, the other thing coming up... So come out to Alba Twitch. Again, Columbia, Pennsylvania, October 5th. Uh, find me. And uh, I will see if I can have some prints of that cover made. And either give them away or sell them really cheap. Something like that. 
just because I want people to see Matt's artwork and people keep complaining I have nothing when I'm there. So this year I'll have the documentary and some some early versions of the cover. The title isn't set yet, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, you'll have a collector's item, I guess. Strange Realities is the other thing I have coming up. That's November 1st through 3rd in Nashville, Tennessee. The 3rd is everyone online, so that's going to be where I do my presentation. And so that will be uh, that'll be cool, as always. I think I've had been on every Strange Reality since the first one Adam did many, many years ago. I don't know how many, five years ago? Something like that. Um, yeah, so check that out. I think Strange Realities, uh, just look up Strange Realities Conference and you'll be able to find that. All right, so other things. Um, with uh, with the music show, The Last Eggs of Lost, we, uh, if, you, if you don't know what that is, that's, it's my underground music show. We hit 30 years in of me hosting it. It was originally the metal cage for the first year or so, because that's what it was that I took over. And uh, without the last exit, there would be nowhere to the road go. But um, when I took that over, uh, it was June 6th or something like that. It was the first time I did a show. And the, at some point, we expanded to six and a half hours. Lost track of where I was going with this. Uh, we expanded to six and a half hours because we had bands live in studio pre-COVID. So once we moved to the building we're in now, which is on the corner corner of like Buffalo and Ithaca, uh, at Buffalo and Stewart, it's this nice big building. It had they intentionally had a performance space that set aside, which they of course didn't hook up right away. And eventually, I got a sound guy who's actually good, uh, my friend Nathan, who I found because of where did the road go ironically enough uh that was at a uh, psychic fair he was running sound at uh, my first co-host whose name is blanking on me right now um i wasn't going to do the psychic fair the idea of a psychic fair was like uh, that's not really what i do and then uh the host of it Lor- lorna who i like said well why don't you just do a round table and i said okay i'll do the round table and I felt like I was going to meet two people there who were going to be important. And that's exactly what happened. I met Nathan, who is, to this day is my sound guy. It completely changed the direction of his life uh, because he didn't know he could do sound like this. And now he can do it professionally. And uh, and my co-host, whose, whose name is gone, it's just disappeared into the ether. So is he, for that matter. Um, I don't know exactly what happened to him. I know he had some issues I hope he's doing okay. Um, but he helped me do the first show on like Kundalini and stuff. And he helped me have someone to bounce stuff off of. I'm not so good with this. Just the narrator mono- narrating monologue stuff. It's This is hard for me to do. Because I feel like I paint myself into a corner. And then I have no way to get out easily unless someone asks me a question. So he helped with that, allowed me to do the first Kundalini shows, which allowed me to get that information out there and have met so many people with those same experiences that I went through. Um, so those were important shows. Um, also, the um, I'm, we're on ACAST now. So there's still a website. You can still get all the shows on the website. The RSS feed from the website still works. The site has been completely redone by Mr. John Tudor. It's a beautiful job. Um, it was not easy. And uh, I'm putting it on ACAST. It's kind of a backup. Plus, I wanted the advertising, which everyone else has, and I've never been able to get for one reason or another. So it's not a lot of advertising, and uh, it definitely helps the show. What I want to do is I want to put all the shows up there. And I started to, to attempt this. And what happened was I, I was publishing them back in 2013. I put the first, first three shows on ACAST. When I did this, they popped up as new shows on, on Podcast Addict, which is not what I wanted. I wanted them to kind of just be there invisibly and not alert everyone when I uploaded them because I'm afraid that's going to be confusing to some people. Everyone tells me it's not, but I feel like if you suddenly see a bunch of new shows, you're not going to necessarily know what's going on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an entire year's worth up as drafts and then 
pretty much right at the same time, just kind of go through and publish them all. They'll be in the right order on the website, but you may get a flood of, hey, new episode of Where Did the Road Go? when it's really a show from 2013, 2014, whatever. Um, and then I'll put a new show up after that so you don't end up getting that new show mixed or lost in that batch of old shows. But it takes time to do each one, uh, fixing some of the links, fixing some of the information. Uh, so yeah, that'll, that'll happen at some point, And I will try and also make a short, uh, blurb about it. So people know it's coming that, Hey, you're going to get flooded with a bunch of where did the road goes. Um, but again, it's, everything's still available on the site. You can still download it from the website. Um, so it's, it's, it's all there. Also, as it comes to mind, there is a, a program I just found called audio bookshelf. And it is a podcast um, program, audiobooks as well. Uh, but what I like about it is it allows you to download podcasts. I like to keep the podcasts that uh, I really like. There have been quite a few of them that over the years, they go away. I mean, most of them are still there. You can still find most stuff out there. But there have been a handful that have gone away that were really good, and I may want to listen to them again someday. So for podcasts I really like, I try to download all the episodes. The only thing I found that really did that was iTunes, and I hate iTunes. And it takes my super-powered computer and almost cripples it when I open it up. It's ridiculous. And, uh, I mean, we're talking 32 cores, 96 gigs of RAM, uh, with a fast M2 drive running the, the main hard drive, and iTunes slows it to a crawl. Yeah, so I hate iTunes. Plus, it unsubscribes me to stuff sometimes because I'm not listening to it. Uh, I'm just using it to download stuff. So this this audio bookshelf is... Uh, I hope that was the name. Uh, is a very good program. If, if you can't find it, message me. I'll send you a link. It's a free program. And it does allow you to download stuff. Like, I, I keep all the... Um, are on doing radio stuff because I want all those shows with Jeff. I want to hear all those shows with Jeff and I want to have them somewhere in case something ever happens to Jeremy. And, uh, you know, I like, I'm an archivist in a sense. I like keeping all this stuff. I have all these demos from bands back in the nineties. Uh, and a lot of them don't have them themselves and they come to me because I have all this stuff. I keep everything I can, uh, without being a hoarder. I mean, it's, Stuff that's not necessarily uh, common, you know, like demos from bands and, uh, oh, things like this. These these were sent to me. Uh, a zine called uh, Vitamin D. And it just says, Issue Zero, Just a Test. It's very cool. I, I enjoy it. I have no idea who it came from. There's a little piece of artwork with it. Um, I, so whoever sent this to me, thank you. It's cool. Um, there's a review of Strange Familiars in there, but nothing from Where Did the Road Go? But yet, you, you sent it to me without any info, so I can't really plug it too easily. Um, also, I lost the letter that came with these, but when we did the Satanic Panic show, um, this is Ritual View Number 1, an overview of Satanic Panic... Satanic Moral Panics. And another one here. This one is, is thick, too. Ritual View Number Four: Worm Angels, the Occult, and More Satanic Panic. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a uh, web address. There does not seem to be a web address, but uh, maybe if you look it up, you'll be able to find it. Yeah, Paris Paracosm Press puts it out. So, uh, yeah, that's that was a result of the Satanic Panic shows we did, which. Went over very, very well. I always worry when we deal with topics like that that people are going to get upset. But things are what they are. Uh, also, if you ever want to mail me anything, it's it's on the website, com. It's P.O. Box 444, Ovid, New York, 14521. Now, back to the last exit. As I said, we just celebrated 30 years. And uh, it was a six-and-a-half-hour show. It still is a six-and-a-half-hour show, basically. But... A lot of, there, there would be a handful of bands who, when we said, do you want to come up and play, and we told them it was at midnight, they were like, oh, that's kind of late. Which was mind-boggling to me, because plenty of 
clubs are still open and they're playing that late, but it, I think it just sounded late. So uh, I simultaneously moved where did the road go back and expanded it a half an hour to 90 minutes from the original 60 and expanded last exit a half hour earlier to 1130. And those same bands said, oh yeah, 1130 is fine. And I kind of just chalk it up to the 999 uh, thing, you know, like, oh, it's $10, that's too much. 999 though, yeah. So it worked, but now we do everything from my studio and uh, we get to, you know, flexible time. So it doesn't really matter what time the show starts because it's pre recorded and we're live streaming the performances, which we could not do at the radio station because we didn't have the internet strength for it. Uh, here we have the internet uh, and then we just play them later on the show, the, the mastered up versions of that. So that half an hour was always kind of this annoying little thing for me, especially with syndication. And so I decided that for that half hour, it's the no rule segment. So every every week, uh, I pick stuff that primarily will... There's no rules to what I'm picking. It doesn't have to be stuff that will fit last exit. So it's a lot of the stuff I'm, I, I will put at the end of Where Did the Road Go, if I have permission. There's other stuff I, I can't put at, where, at the end of Where Did the Road Go that I'd love to, because I don't have permission. Um, because it's on a major, you know, it's on a bigger label or whatever. Uh, but I could play it on WVBR in that segment. So the segment, the half hour between where the road go and last exit is now the no rule segment. And it will be music that is not, uh, necessarily last exit music, not necessarily metal. Um, it might be metal because there are no rules. So I will play whatever I want, but I like a lot of stuff that sometimes I feel like yeah, I can't get away as, as wide of a scope as the last eggs of the lost covers. It's a little outside of that. So, you know, like I can't really play someone like Lush or Tanya Donnelly in the last exit. Um, and so I like, I like this, this idea, this little half hour of no rules and it makes the last eggs at a nice, neat six hours, uh, as well conceptually because every show is conceptual it has a beginning middle and end uh usually themes throughout we talk about movies we talk about all kinds of stuff going on and uh of course play heavy music and dark music and stuff you're literally not going to hear anywhere else and some of this stuff is not available on streaming platforms um and if there's something you really like and it's not available anywhere drop me a line uh i might be able to do something about that so, uh, let's see. What else do we have coming up? Um, on Where Did the Road Go? I have recorded shows with Jeremy Vaney. I don't think that one's been posted anywhere yet. Uh, that might have gone up for patrons, actually. I think that one went up for patrons. So patrons get the show a week early, commercial free, uh, as well as usually another almost show length patreon segment because that's basically what's been happening at this point it's a continuation of the conversation it's a little more casual and so there's there's that one there's uh one with brennan brennan store um along with chris and saxon uh i did another one with natalie and steve berg and another one with chris ernst and uh come on brain you can do this no, it can't. It absolutely cannot, because that's the information I need. Robert Guffey. Robert Guffey. Talking mostly about... Uh, yep, there we go. It's, it's All the information has apparently left left my head. It's uh, Kirby. Jack Kirby. That's who we're talking about. And uh, it's not only about Jack Kirby. Uh, I wasn't really familiar with Jack Kirby. It was fascinating. Robert's always fascinating to have on. And then a long segment after that. So if you want to become a patron, it's a great way to help the show and get a ton of extra content. And just go to wheredotherogo.com, click on the Patreon link, and it's only $3 a month. It's the, you know, uh, I'm trying to do it, put together a coffee. I just haven't had time, but coffee, I think is going to, I think the least amount it allows me to charge is $5. Um, which I don't like. I'd rather just do it at three. It's always been three. And I'd rather have more people hear this stuff than than not. 
um, then, then you know, charge more and not have as many people hear it, I guess, is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. I'm going to try and make it available on some other places as well. I just have to find the time and energy to do it. As far as the documentary I mentioned, um, we were trying to get it on Amazon. Hasn't worked out. Uh, Amazon's not easy to deal with. But uh, you can get it now. I mean, you can get it if you become a patron. It is on there. It is in the patron uh, section. Uh, you can just watch it from there. Or you can buy it just by going to Patreon. Search for it and you will find a link and you can just buy it if you don't want to become a patron. All the shows, all the extra shows are also like that now. Uh, you can just buy a single show if you want. You don't have to subscribe. So if you just want to want to hear one thing, you can go there, find it, and listen to it. And like just just pay the three bucks for the uh, episode, and that's it. There's no recurring fees or anything else. But you're better off joining up and getting extra stuff all the time, plus access to all the old stuff. All right, have I covered everything? I have no idea if I have covered everything or not. Um, Got the stuff upcoming. Again, if you want to give me a birthday gift, uh, donations would be highly appreciated. Uh, and my Amazon wish list will be uh, linked on this video as well if you want to do that. Because there are some things that I could definitely use. And I have a pile of books that I need to get through. And uh, some other interesting guests I'm, I'm talking to about coming on. But I don't want to say who because I feel like it just always jinxed it, jinx it when I do that. So try to think if there's anything else interesting recently. Well, my lawnmower stopped working. That was that was fun. Uh, jinxed myself on that too. I have a Husqvarna riding mower because I have a lot of lawn, and uh, it used to be that I hated mowing lawn and. It, at some point, I put earplugs in because I was like, man, this, you know, it's so loud. Especially the previous mower I had was just really loud. And then I'm like, for putting earplugs in, why am I not putting earbuds in and listening to stuff? And now I like mowing lawn because I can go out and listen to podcasts and, uh, just be outside. And, you know, I like my property. It's just, you know, it was more of a chore before. But now that I get to listen to podcasts while I do it, not so much of a chore. Um, but yeah, it, it, I've had this Husqvarna for four years. It's never given me a single problem. Starts every single time. First, first turn to the key, it just fires right up and goes. And uh, I got a a very cheap chainsaw on a pole. After doing something that didn't, um, I, I had to get some high branches down, and I, I was leaning an angle, a ladder at a very bad angle. And considering taking my full-size chainsaw up the ladder and going, well, that's the chances I'm going to fall. This is how I almost die. Uh, I decided against it, and for like 50 bucks, I got a chainsaw on a pole on Amazon or something. Works fine. Um, so I was like, great, let me get some of these other branches down I need to get down. And I took the mower over there, started up first, first turn of the key, drove it over there. I literally thought to myself, man, this mower has worked so good. I don't, I'm not sure how long, I wasn't sure how long I had had it. It's been four years. Um, I'm like, this thing just runs beautiful all the time. And I turned it off and I cut all the branches down. And I put them all in the cart behind the mower and then the mower wouldn't, wouldn't start. So that was, that's on me. That's totally on me. And I'm thinking, eh, I never replaced the spark plug. Could be the spark plug. You know, maybe a filter or something. No, no, it was something inside the engine. I took it actually to, to an Amish guy after a couple of my friends looked at it and couldn't figure it out. And he has a small engine repair shop, which just is so absurd to me that, you know, they can't use the stuff because they're Amish, but they can fix it. And initially he seemed like, you know, he checked it out. He's like, I don't know. You know, he's going to, uh, you might just want a new mower. And I'm like, it's four years old. I shouldn't... I, I'm not going to get a new mower. They're expensive. I mean, when I got that one, it was a decent mower four years ago, and it was like seventeen hundred. Now that you can't even get them for under two thousand dollars, even the junky ones, the little ones. I mean, you can get a used one, but that's just asking for problems, as I have found out way too many times. So, yeah, apparently he's uh he figured out what the problem was. 
It's going to cost me a few hundred dollars, but that's better than a few couple thousand to buy a new mower that I don't have the money for. So, uh, yeah, that happened. That was fun. Um, yeah, I don't, I, drawing a blank on anything else right now. I mean, I've updated you on the book, stuff coming up. Um, and again, thank you to everyone who has helped out. Thank you to anyone who cares about the stuff I'm doing, uh, whether it be the music stuff or the paranormal stuff, both, whatever. Thank you so much. I've met so many awesome people from doing all of this stuff, which is another reason I would never want to stop. So, uh, yeah. But help is always, always, always appreciated. Become a patron. Talk to people, you know, tell other people about the show. Give it a good rating on the, whatever you use to listen to it on. All that stuff helps. Um, yeah. And uh, I will try and do another one of these videos sooner rather than later. All right. Wheretherogo.com if you want to contact me. Uh, also, thelastexit.org. I guess that's it.